So I'm going to talk about challenging rotator cuff repairs. And, you know, it's interesting. Everyone in this room, uh, many of you who I work with regularly see that we fix these rotator cuffs. And we do them all the time. And our patients tend to do pretty darn well. But as it turns out, when we look at really early studies on rotator cuff healing, it wasn't as good or it's not always as good as we want it to be. And, and we think that healing is important. And as we look carefully at what's happening out there, some patients are going to go on and not fully heal their rotator cuffs and do well. But we want the best results for all of our patients. We want to consider ourselves more exceptional than not. And when we look at the data, if you heal, if you heal, you do a little bit better. You're stronger. You feel that much closer to normal. And as you follow patients out over a period of time, if they don't completely heal the rotator cuff, well, it's common sense. They're not going to feel as close to normal. And those who do hear the rotator cuffs feel a whole lot better and we'll come out and we'll see them. We'll see them in the grocery store and they'll say, look, I'm completely normal. It's as if I've never had surgery. And that's the result we all, we all aspire to try and have. So it, it does matter. Healing is important. And how can we get, the, the gist of my talk is, how can I look at methodologies to enhance or improve healing? And what do I do in the setting of a revision rotator cuff or someone who's not gotten the result that they wanted? And how can we change or modify that so that we don't repeat the same events? Well, interestingly, if we're trying to figure out how to make a better repair, it maybe is, is useful to look at, well, when do they fail and why do they fail? Well, when they fail, amazingly or not amazingly, it happens pretty early in their rehabilitation. So if you think about the tendon as being a pretty weak piece of tissue, the rotator cuff tendon, when we put these stitches through them and, and stitch it all back down to the bone, as we start to take you through the early therapy, as we start to move your arm in an early way, this is when failure can happen. And we don't know, it's not always if you have a pop or an acute event, but really in the first three to four months, it can slowly tear through or honestly stated, fair to, fail, fail to heal. So it's a re-tear, a failure of healing. Of course, we all have individuals who have been 10, 12 years after their surgery, had a new event, fallen downstairs, dislocated while skiing or something like that. Well, that's different. Here we're talking about patients who have had what we thought was an uneventful surgery, but just not gotten better in the way, in the way we want them to. So as it turns out, early failures happen early. So what do we need to do? How do we stop this? Well, we want to come up with ways to strengthen the repair and speed up the healing because none of us have time for this. I certainly don't have time to wait around for my rotator cuff to heal. I got to get back to work, fix these things. So the first thing to realize is that rotator cuffs, this is a disease tendon. And if we look at the histology in the study that we looked at, we actually took little biopsies of the tendon. And Paul Jablonski, you'll remember me wanting my biopsy sent off. And we look at what's happening to the microscopic ultrastructure. And the collagen is not aligned properly. They're, they have the wrong kinds of collagen. The vascularity is not there. The tenocytes, which are the important parts of the cells, are not there. And what we know, what we know is that <laughs> muscles don't stay the same as you get a little bit older. Uh, so look, when the tissue is, is optimum, the ideal that all of us here at NIOS look for is a strong repair where we're going to take this, we're going to link it into two, uh, into two rows of anchors, put tape down, and really hold this rotator cuff down in a rigid, firm way with, with a low, prow, low profile fixation. And when, uh, when we leave the operating room and the rotator cuff looks this good, we feel really confident that this person is going to do extremely well. So that's our ideal. But what, what about when we have tendon that looks like this, when it's really ruffled, or they've had previous surgery, or the repair has been there for a long time, or they've had four or five cortisone injections before they really had time to address this. Well, look, solution one is to say, let's keep it really simple. And this is a guy who had a previous rotator cuff repair, but as it turns out, his biceps tendon was really bad. So after discussing the tri tri treatment options with him, I said, look, let's do something really simple. Lo and behold, 10 days after just releasing this guy's biceps, and I promise you, I'll do the quote, Dr. Sethi, you're so great. Look how high I can lift my arm. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm lip syncing. He's a ventriloquist. Uh, so what, uh, what we can do, you know, one of the first solutions in revision or complex rotator cuff tear is to look at what the other pain generators are. And when we look at these other pain generators, one of them is the biceps. So very frequently, I'm going to do a biceps tenodesis in my index operation to try and address this because perhaps this man could have avoided a secondary surgery. But we can keep it simple sometimes and look for the specific pain generator. The next thing we're going to do is come up with a stronger repair. And uh, any of you who do any construction or have watched your house get built, we use rebar. So now I can use extra stitches as rebar. I can put these extra stitches across the rotator cuff and use the stitch material to try and support or augment the repair. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to enhance the biology and I'm going to touch on stem cells in a few minutes, but what about using your own stem cells by making these little channels in the bone and, and creating vents to your own bone marrow. These little channels can come up and deliver stem cells autologously in your own way to try and enhance your rotator cuff repair. And this has actually panned out in a Japanese study to suggest it actually does help. What else can I do? Well, now I've got this rebar in there. I'm looking at rotator cuff tissue. This blue stitch going across the front is that rebar. And I'm gonna pass my stitches under it. So as I pull, as the, as the body tries to pull those stitches out of, the, uh, out of the rotator cuff tendon, it has to pull not only through the rotator cuff tendon, but it has to pull through that stitch as well. So one option that we have here is, again, using stronger stitches, thicker stitches, alternate methods of fixation, alternate ways of grasping or using what we call a luggage tag stitch to grab and hold onto tendon in a substantial and strong way. And here in a rotator cuff that's been repaired twice before, I'm able to get it back down and really feel like I have strong fixation. What about the adding patches into it? Well, the patches have been around for a long time. We've tried many different things and it turns out human skin tissue may be one of our best options for using as a patch. And here what we can see is in a cadaveric image, a patch sewn into the rotator cuff. And what we can prove in the lab, because a lot of what we talk about, we wanna try and prove in the lab first. We don't want the, the operating room to be our experimenting ground. And we can see that we make it stronger. And actually studying this in real human patients, it works and the re-tear rate is a lot less in a complex tear when we can use one of these grafts. So here's another situation where I'm looking at a rotator cuff. It's very thinned out. You can see previous evidence of uh, of stitches uh, in that rotator cuff, so you know this person's had a failure before, but the tissue is very thin. So I'm gonna take the idea of putting skin grafts on there. So I'll put these little dowels of skin, these are cadaver donated, I'll sew them into the rotator cuff, slide them down through the arthroscopic operation, and put this in on top of that rotator cuff like a washer. And this is exactly what it is, like a three ring binder, if you remember those, uh, where you put those little post-it savers. This is the idea here. And by putting those on, I'm actually gonna reduce the chance that this can pull out. It only takes a few extra minutes. It's done arthroscopically. It's not very invasive. And these are ways that we're looking at making this better. And when we look at these patients afterwards, they actually can heal up and, and their MRIs can look good. What about when I have a bigger defect? Well, here you can see another image. This fluffy thing is a big skin graft. So as opposed to a little washer, I have a rotator cuff that's a lot thinner and I put a big skin graft over the entire rotator cuff and this will incorporate in and thicken it up. And this way I'm gonna have a thicker, stronger tendon that's not gonna tear so quickly. Here's just a second look at it. Another neat idea that's out there now is to put in these Implants. This is an allograft full of growth factors. And after the rotator cuff has been repaired, you can see this amazing technology. I'm gonna staple all these growth factors down on top of the rotator cuff. And you can see again, in simple arthroscopic operations, I can deliver your growth factors and I can augment or enhance your repair in a neat way. There are times when the rotator cuff is so far gone and so irre irreparable that I'm gonna take a skin graft and what we do call a superior capsule reconstruction and attach it to the glenoid socket and bring it all the way over. You've got, you guys have done these with these me in the operating room. You see they're a hard technical operation, but they can take someone who's had multiple failed operations and a lot of pain to having no significant pain and the ability to use their arm overhead. Perhaps not restore their normal strength, but to re reduce their pain. And these are young, active 50 and 60 year old patients we're talking about. We want to enhance your own biology. We're going to use special types of rivets or anchors where the blood can come through them. We can maintain your own stem cells. What about some platelet-rich plasma? Does this work? Actually, in the first studies we looked at where we applied platelet-rich plasma, it wasn't that great. But now, looking at large tears, using your own cells, your own PRP in a large tear, actually may make a difference. Well, it's not very hard to use PRP. You bring it with you everywhere you go. It's readily available in your body and it's a simple, simple application. What about bone marrow concentrate? This is where stem cells are gonna come from. Well, looking at studies here, again, 10 year data, where we look at the amount of re-tearing, you're gonna do much better. So how does this work? Well, in this case, we're gonna just use a simple trocar. Sometimes I'm gonna go to your hip, but we can simplify it and go right within the surgical site put a needle or a trocar, that's the fancy word for a big needle, into the bone, pull your bone marrow out of, uh, of the shoulder. This is bone marrow 
Then, once it's out in this tiny needle, tiny poke hole, all part of an arthroscopic operation, we'll take this bone marrow and we're gonna put it through a fancy machine that's gonna isolate out the stem cells. This machine, through this concept of flow cytometry, will concentrate your stem cells. They'll put it into a small aliquot for me and after the rotator cuff repair is completed, I can apply your own stem cells, your, your pluripotent cells, onto the rotator cuff. Is this for every single rotator cuff? No, not at all. But does it work? Well, we, yes, we think it, t it can help, particularly in large and revision tears. Your stem cells can come from your own bone, they can come from your own fat. I don't think we know yet, medically speaking, whether you're gonna do better with your own fat. Um, but in this study, where the Japanese uh, surgeons looked at putting stem cells from fat onto your rotator cuff, it seemed to help a lot. How did they get them to stick on top of that? Well, you put a little glue on top of the stem cells and it actually stays in place pretty easily. So simple fibrin glue on top of those stem cells and looking at lower retail rates. The last couple points, amniotic growth factors. These have been around for a long time. These are growth factors that may help reduce adhesions. More importantly, as we look at the chemicals that are inside shoulders, we've got something called matrix metalloproteinases. They break down tissue in a lot of ways. We want to inhibit. We want to inhibit these matrix metalloproteinases. And this amniotic factors may be another way that we're doing this. So here's the last application on the last slide. The rotator cuff is almost completed. We take what I call a streamer. This is laden with amniotic growth factors. I lay it down underneath the rotator cuff repair, tuck it into place, and now when it's tucked into place, I'll complete the repair and put that in. I'll sandwich in that little growth factor. This is a little pin to hold it in place because when I turn on the water, I don't want it to wash out. That would be really frustrating. Uh, so now that this, this little needle holds it in place, I'm going to take the sutures on the end and then drop them in and link them into place. And here it is. The amniotic sandwich is, is put in there. Now I can remove the spinal needle, hopefully now, and, and not leave it in you forever, uh, and let that, let that sit there and enhance wave growth. When we look at these afterwards, look, we're getting rotator cuffs that shouldn't have healed, that didn't heal the first and second time to heal in, in, in satisfactory fashion. So. I, I like this. The future is now. I think when we get into challenging thinned out rotator cuffs, revision cuffs, we can augment our repairs. We can make them stronger with better suture, better suture interfaces. We can use grafts to strengthen them up. We can look at biologically enhanced repairs with PRP, with stem cells, and amniotic matrix. So thank you very much.